In an effort to 3D print everything my mom told me to never Google online, I went ahead and picked up the Bamboo Lab A1 Combo Edition. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and unbox it and get it all assembled. Now, I picked this thing up for about $4.99 online. It came out to about $520 bucks, uh, with taxes and all that. And it comes with the printer itself, obviously. It comes with the AMS unit, which allows you to print with four different colors at a time. And it also comes with these nuts. <laughs> Got nah, I'm just kidding. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this unboxing. Got the power cable. I don't even know what this is. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Looks like we got the actual printing plate here. And looks like we got a quick start guide. Came with a few stickers. Don't know what I'll do with these. Probably just end up in the junk drawer. Looks like we also got our tubes for our, our filament and some spare filament. We've got the AMS stand. We've got our rollers for the AMS device. We've got the AMS system itself, which I'll actually leave off to the side for now until I'm ready to get that all assembled. We've got this bad boy. Looks like it's like the frame or something. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't even know. And we got this thing in my bob here. I'm not even sure what this is either. Pull it off from here. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so the first thing we have to do is install the build plate. So I'm gonna move all this over a little bit. And now we've got to orient this the correct way. Looks like the base is magnetic, so it's pretty easy to get it all aligned. Now we're gonna move on to the printer frame. So I'm gonna move this over out the way. Move the frame here. All right, so now we're gonna put the printer frame just like so. And we're gonna tilt this at a 45 degree angle-ish and slide it on through. All we did is tilt the, the base at a 45 degree angle. Then we pushed it through the frame and we lined it up with these two indents here on the frame that are missing on the base itself to get them all lined up. So now let's go ahead and move on. All right, now we're gonna push this baby all the way to this side where the screen is located. Now I'm gonna flip this. I'm gonna open the Y-axis cover here and pull it out gently. All right, so now there's 10 holes that we're gonna go ahead and put screws in. Each of them are highlighted in green here. So let's go ahead and do that. Five minutes later. All right, now we're gonna push it to the other side and install the other two screws. Reinsert this cover here. So future Keith here, make sure you remove these four screws here on these black brackets. I ended up skipping that step in part one which is literally removing all the material. I didn't realize these screws were part of it. Even though it provides you with a picture in the booklet and when you start the thing up, I somehow skipped over it and almost broke my because the thing couldn't move. Now we gotta lie this thing on its side. Recommend use some cardboard, put it down. So we're gonna align these clips with these holes here and thankfully they're all 
color coded for the most part. Uh, white green to match with white green here. And then we got a USB-C. Okay, so it looks like the USB is gonna stick out. The fuck? So these two clips here with these holes here. And slide up, there we go, and you feel a click. Now screw this pre-installed screw. All right, so now we gotta open this flab here. We'll plug in these colors. Green goes with green, obviously. Make sure you pay attention to the little indentations on the bottom of the cables. White goes in white. And yellow, which is all the way down here, obviously goes in yellow. And then you just tuck it in the little cable raceway we have here so that it doesn't get clipped by anything. All right, now we can flip it back over and we are good to go. All right, so now we need to fold out the screen. Now we're installing the purge wiper. Take this, install it at the end, just like so. And then we're gonna screw it in place. All right, now I'm gonna move this out of the way and work on the AMS for a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set up the AMS assembly. Uh, so we're gonna grab the base, grab the top and the rollers. Got the scissors. You want to make sure you align the, the numbers up correctly. It comes with this little sticker letting you know one and two are on this side and three and four are on this side. Now we're going to install the rollers. They're annotated with yellow and green markers and they're also color coded here on the side. So kind of hard to mess up, although I wouldn't be surprised if I did. So I'm going to do the yellows first. And now we're gonna go ahead and get these two uh, hooked up together. So I'm gonna face the 3D printer screen towards me and the AMS light on this side. Now you're gonna get four PFTE tubes. Now take the two shorter of the two cables and plug those into ports one and two on the AMS light and then the longer two on three and four. And the instructions also say to take this data cable and actually align it with the extra hole that is here on the cable organizer so that it stays out of the way during operations. There we go, nice and snug. Now we'll plug the data port for the AMS light into the back of the printer here. And it doesn't matter which port you plug it into. And now we'll plug in the power cable uh, for this. However, I'm actually gonna move this to where I'm actually gonna have it permanently located before I do that so I can then plug it into the power. All right, let's plug this baby in, get it connected and test it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and select our language, our region, and our Wi-Fi password. That should be pretty self-explanatory, so let's do that real quick. All right, so now that we've got this thing connected to the Wi-Fi, now we're gonna go ahead and scan and connect it to our Bamboo Handy app. So I am gonna go to Devices, Find Printer, and scan the QR code. Accept, confirm, and we should be binding. I'm gonna name this. And now I've got it connected. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the calibration, motor noise cancellation, vibration compensation, and auto bed leveling. So that's gonna take a few minutes. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and install the filament spool. Uh, I've got some blue here that I got off of Amazon. So I will install blue on one. So all you're gonna do is push it all the way on to the AMS system. 
And now I'm gonna take the filament and feed it into the input area right here. And we should be good to go. All right, so it's pretty easy to load the filament in your AMS system. However, it can be a pain in the butt depending on some filament types. The first thing you wanna go ahead and do is obviously load your filament. Now the bottom pieces you're gonna to wanna to have going upward and they're gonna go into these bottom two compartments here, terminals two and three. We'll just go into this little hole that's right here. Now there can be an issue inserting the filament into the hole. It can just get stuck. You'll think you make it in, you'll hear a little click, you might not even hear anything at all, but it's not actually completely in. So what you'll wanna do is potentially cut your filament with some scissors or snips at a 45 degree angle. I've already done that. And then from here, you wanna spool this up and make sure it's tight. Just leave enough excess for you to actually get it in the hole and then you want to put a little bit of pressure and push the filament into the hole until you push it in enough to where the AMS system actually senses it and then starts spooling it into the PFTE tubes. So that's how you load your filament. It can be a pain in the butt. If it doesn't automatically start spooling the filament in, you haven't actually inserted your filament all the way correctly. The majority of the time I have this issue, I just end up cutting this at a 45 degree angle and it works every time. All right, so now that we've got our filament loaded, let's go ahead and do our first test print. We will actually just go ahead and use one of the test prints that come pre-installed on the Bamboo Lab. To do that, you would just click on the screen to get it to come up. You'll click Print Files, and from here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of pre-installed projects that you can just click on and print. Now, these aren't the default ones that I have here. You'll probably have uh, a few ships or something like that. I had a ship on here and that's what I used to print as an example. However, I've deleted them since I recorded previously and these are just some other stuff that I've been working on. But So you would just go ahead and click one of the projects. You click, uh, you wanna make sure you're using AMS, you've done your bed leveling and all that if you want to, and then click next and then just press print. Let's go ahead and do our test print. But anyways, guys, that is our first unboxing, assembly, setup, and first print on my Bamboo Lab A1. If you guys like the video, definitely make sure you subscribe. I actually recorded this a few weeks ago and have since been doing all kinds of prints. I'm going to be dropping another video on my beginner experience using this thing. It's been awesome. I've been able to print all kinds of dumb stuff. I'm definitely going to want to check it out. Anyways, I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.